Good morning, Representative Schakowsky. Jan Schakowsky is here. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me back. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, that was a human person, man, comparing uh, women to sea turtles. Did you hear that one yesterday? Oh, but you know, um, that's how they think. Oh. That's a, the equivalence. And they want to put us in the same category so that they can control our bodies. But you know what? Women are not going back. Women are not going to go back into second-class status in this country. No, we're you, not. You said it perfectly uh, yesterday on Twitter, Representative. You said Roe was not the start of abortions. It was the end of women dying from them. We must and we will fight back with everything we've got. The Senate must end the filibuster and codify Roe into law. You probably heard Mitch McConnell yesterday. I, it, we knew this would happen. He was sort of hinting they'll blow up the fil- filibuster to pass a nationwide ban on abortion. What They're just do, getting started. Yeah. What What do we do about this? I, I mean, I, I don't know what you do when you have a problem that consists of Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. That's the reason we can't change the filibuster. Because we have the vote coming up this year, November 2022, we can change everything. Yeah. It's about getting people out to vote. The reason that we're in the situation that we're in is because we lost an election and the uh, and the Republicans would and did do anything they could to themselves um, uh, eliminate the filibuster so that they could stop the, uh, the so that they could allow for the these rogue members of the uh, Supreme Court to get appointed. We need to vote. Everybody needs to vote. This remember, has to be, remember when they not, told us we were overreacting in 2016, Representative? Remember that when we were hysterical <laughs> about? But this is what it's come down to now. Everything we've been warning about. I mean, Mitch McConnell absolutely can and will blow up the filibuster to put a nationwide ban on abortion. And yes, it, and if we get, but if we get a blue tsunami and more senators in, we will blow up. The, we could get rid of the filibuster and codify Roe. Right? That's how stark it is. It's this close, Stephanie. People, you know what our biggest obstacle is? That people are skeptical that we can win. And I want to tell you, aside from you, there's a lot of pundits who are saying, oh, you know, it looks like it is likely that the Republicans will win and they'll take. No. These are the people who told us that Barack Hussein Obama couldn't be president or that Hillary Clinton was a slam dunk or that we couldn't get two Democratic senators, um, you know, and we got uh, a, a, a black minister and a Jew as a United yeah. States Democratic United States senator. We can do this. And it's not just women that are going to come out, although the vast majority of Americans, period, do not think that a role should be overturned, that abortion rights should be made illegal. Yeah. I mean, the vast majority, I just saw some polling today. It's like uh, 80%, 90% of Democrats and 85% of independents and 53% of Republicans. Come on. Yeah. It's about yeah. getting people out to vote. Yeah. No, and I was saying someone tweeted yesterday that they talked to their Republicans, friends who said, I've had enough. We've had enough. We're voting blue. It, it, don't underestimate that. Each and every one of us talks to every friend, every neighbor, everybody you think would never change their minds. Now is the time, isn't it? Because as the president said yesterday, these are they're extremists. There, there is a bloodlust to make every abortion law even worse and crueler in every state, even before this has happened at the Supreme Court, right? Exactly. And I'm so glad that the president mentioned that their agenda that they are determined to get passed would be bad for all Americans. Um, And we know that we can actually uh, use that to get people out to vote and we have to. This is uh, this is a must win. This is a must win elections. And Um, and not only uh, people will die because women will die because they don't have access to abortion. Do you think they're done with abortion rights? They're going to go after so many other basic rights. LGBTQ, same-sex marriage. Who knows? They may want to go back to uh, inter-racial marriage. Um, These these people are extremists. 
Um, you, yeah, I, you know, you had a lot of great tweets. You said abortion is health care. I mean, the fact that we've just been fighting people that say wearing a piece of cloth on your face is government overreach. And, you know, having to take a vaccine in the middle of a temp pandemic is government overreach. Want to reach right into women's bedrooms and lives and wombs. I mean, how not that a big midterm message, too? Isn't this the, supposed to be the small government party? You know, I was saying my, I, I believe my dad, when he was running with Goldwater, used to say the government has one hand in everybody's pocket and the other hand in everybody's business. They used to, right? They mm-hmm. used to, that used to be what they railed against. And and I, I, I think that's something that crosses partisan lines, don't you think? And they still do. You know, freedom to carry a, a gun anywhere. Freedom to not wear a mask and if they want to expose people to uh, the pandemic. Um, freedom, you know, that those kinds of freedoms that they that they define. But when it comes to women controlling our own bodies, this is this is not just fundamental right. This is a threshold right because really, if women cannot control their bodily autonomy, then they can't even plan their lives. You cannot um, if you if you ha- can't decide whether or not to have a, a family. Um, you you cannot know your future. You cannot predict that. No, th- we, this is unacceptable. And I'm telling you, we I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but we are not going back. Yeah. And the election is the key. Yep. You well, and also as I keep saying, I, Mitch McConnell has strongly hinted, which is not a surprise, that he will blow up the filibuster. And these are the again the party representative that's been screaming states' rights. Oh, we should send this. Just about sending it back to the states. He's saying he'll blow up the filibuster basically to to make sure it's a national ban on abortion, which would override states' rights. So you and well, somebody he, somebody said. Uh, uh, Miss McConnell was asked where he draws his moral red lines, and you said, I'll save you time. He doesn't have one. He doesn't have any moral lines, right? It's all about power. You remember when Barack Obama wanted to have his uh, nominee for the Supreme Court considered? Well, when uh, Coney Barrett was was actually finally uh, sworn in, the election, Donald Trump had lost. Yeah. Um, and uh, he had no problem while the election was taking place to make sure that he suspended the filibuster and was able to get his nominees on this rogue, illegitimate Supreme Court, stolen Supreme Court. I mean, you know, it's interesting. Glenn Kirshner, our, our li- my legal lad, uh, you know, it's hard to go back in time, Representative, but, you know, he was talking about when Barack Obama was denied his Supreme Court pick. It was almost a year till the election. When you remember that time, Mitch McConnell said it's too close to an election. So, but he, I think he was saying, I'm not even sure the legal mechanism, but that, you know, Mitch McConnell could have been, I guess, in effect sued and, you know, to, to, you know, to perform his duties of advising consent and give Merrick Garland a hearing. Do you, what do you think of that sort of thing? Should this happen in the future? Because I think we just never... I, I think envision this level of of uh, I don't even know obstructionism that Mitch McConnell has engaged in, and I, I, was there a way you think we could have forced him, uh, Mayor Garland to get a hearing? I think everything was tried to to do that. Um, Mitch McConnell, who calls himself the Grim Reaper, um, he probably that he is willing to kill anything the House sends him. He's willing to ignore any kind of precedent. They are just getting started here. And if, uh, you know, men don't think they're at risk, um, if, uh, you know, Republicans don't think they're at risk, rights, family, decision-making um, is is seriously, seriously yeah. at risk. One last issue, um, Representative, because I know you've fought the good fight for so long on all these issues, you know, that Republicans are now trying to say, we're the party of parents after Glenn Youngkin won. I mean, Trying to ban critical race theory or mentioning that gay people exist uh, seems to be their rallying cry, these culture wars again, right? I think that's a winning issue for us, don't you? I mean, I don't think the majority of sane people and parents in this country think it's bad to teach our actual history of racism and that racism's bad and gay people exist. I don't think most people, are, you know, are opposed to, to their children learning that, do you? Race theory isn't even a thing. Um, as they characterize it. And what they want to do is deprive 
parents and communities, history, what is real, teaching facts, because we don't want to make children feel uncomfortable about learning about the history of slavery in the United States of, of, of America. So, I, you know, the, the things that they want to do are taking rights away from parents. And, you know, I have a friend um, whose mother died in childbirth as it was as she was warned would happen. She was carrying a child. She had to have that pregnancy. Those children, her son and two little girls were left orphans. Yeah. That family didn't have a choice to protect themselves. I'm telling you, this is something taking away rights from parents, from families, from communities to do this radical agenda. Yeah. And that's all it cares well, about. I, and I feel like you must think it's particularly ironic being from Illinois where uh, Denny Hastert, is he still in prison for, you know, I mean, obviously involvement with underage boys. This is the party that is accusing every Democrat and, you know, any school that teaches about gay people is of grooming Right. And you've got someone in Matt Gates who's still under investigation for underage. Right. Uh, for uh, God knows what child traffic, whatever it is. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's, no, I yeah. think I think Donny, I think Donnie's out of uh, out of jail. But yeah, yeah. He, he was considered Mr. Clean. Um, he was the coach. And people yeah. called him in Congress, called him coach. Well, yeah. in the meantime, yeah. those kids were being abused. Those uh, student athletes. Um, yeah. No. Look, the hypocrisy is overwhelming, but we have the opportunity. People cannot be um, discouraged from fight, and, and, and there's a lot of negativity out there. We just have to tune out the noise yep. and get to work. Tune out and turn out. That's right. I like it. Yeah. We just wrote that. We wrote that. You and I wrote that. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. All right. <laughs> All right. Representative, you, uh, Jan Schakowsky, you remain the rockin' congresswoman and will always be yes. the rockin' congresswoman from the great state of Illinois. Thank you, honey.